here's the thing, you know, I learned, especially from French winemakers. Okay, you know, the guy from France comes with his wine. He, he is dressed really nicely, right? The guy looks good. He, uh, and then he starts to talk about his family and, his, and, and the house and the land and the sunshine and the tradition and the grapes and the rolling hills. And people, they're like fainting. You know, they're, they're like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. The American brewer comes and says, I have my beer has, you know, uh, uh, an original gravity of 16. Uh, it has 45 IBUs. It has a uh, finishing gravity of 1.5, you know, and it uses bread and like all this, this stuff, you know, to normal people, and we are not normal people. This stuff to no does not sound delicious. I mean, it is not delicious sounding language. You know, we don't speak in the right language for gastronomy. We don't move people because our language is wrong. Uh, because we speak like scientists, because we think like scientists, so we talk about numbers. Numbers should never be part of a conversation about food and drinks, ever. You know, this, you know whatever they make in the kitchen here, there are numbers. There's numbers for salt, you know, there's numbers for the tannin in the wine, there's numbers for the acidity of the wine. These people would never be foolish enough to mention their numbers. But brewers like this all the time. I hope and I think I go to across the street, there are no IBU numbers in Fien Moose. That I think is your secret. You know, that uh, you will speak about beer as food and as something which is supposed to be delicious, not a chemistry experiment. Beer, you know, beer is culinary. Beer is culinary. Wine is not culinary. You know, it, you know, wine is, you know, is on the farm and in the vineyard. But, you know, if the winemaker has a vision, you know, at the beginning of the year, how, exactly how his wine will take, that it tastes, and then, you know, he is faking it. He's putting things in. You know, beer is culinary. You know, you invent it in the mind first, you get the ingredients you need, and you create like a chef. It's, it's a completely different mindset. My closest peers, if you like, are cocktail makers, chefs, and musicians, not winemakers. You know, uh, because we have, we have, you know, brewing is an act of pure intention. I have a dream in my head, and now I will create it. You know, do I have the technical ability to carry out my dream? I used to be a filmmaker. It's the same mindset. You know, you have ha half and half. It's art and science. And if you have science with no art, you have Budweiser and you have Jerry Bruckheimer. If you have, you know, uh, uh, you have, you know, you have art but no science, you have a lot of student films. You're like, wow, great acting, but wow, the, you know, the, the, the picture is terrible. You have art and science together, you can do everything. And that, I think, is uh, you know, the, where we get now with craft beer, where in the past, you know, the big brewers were better than us at the science. And we were good at the art. Now, you know, we are good at the art and the science, and they are still good at the science, only. <laughs> and that's why, that's why we're going to win. You know, not only that, but um, everywhere that you go, people are recovering from an industrial food system. You know, we lost everything. We lost everything, except maybe in the South, we still have barbecue. Um, we lost basically our entire food culture. Ironically, this is one of the reasons why our food culture comes back so strong and why craft beer is so strong is because we have like a clean slate. We had nothing. So when you have nothing, you want everything. I mean, I don't know, you know, and, and this, this part I, I'm not sure about for France. I know about the United States. Uh, craft brewing in the United States and in some other countries is part of an overall food movement. People don't see them together. They think that the chocolate is different. The coffee, you know, people doing their cold brew or their, you know, their Chemex or whatever else, that this is different. Or that uh, people going back to Pampoilin uh, uh, is different. 
It's not different. It's all part of one movement. It's waking up from the matrix, you know, and you realize you would like things to be real, and now you want real cheese and real beer and real ice cream and real bread and real everything. And it's all one thing. They are not separate.